Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this week's video I think maybe we're going to conclude this uh, little series I've been doing on the Harbor Freight uh, electric winch and the trolley. Uh, several videos back you saw me make the adapter plate to go between the uh, uh, winch and the tro trolley and in a minute, I'll get into a little bit more explanation on why I turned it in the direction that I did. Uh, then I think maybe in the last video, you saw me hang that 12-foot uh, I-beam with the winch and trolley on it. Well, everything doesn't go just as planned every time. Uh, I'll explain more to you when we get up, uh, when I get up on the scaffold again and show you what we're going to be show you the use for what we're going to be doing today. What we're going to do is turn this piece of, uh, uh, I think this is a piece of uh, chrome molly uh, left over from another job, but we're going to attempt to turn that into this roller with bearings in it. And the axle that we'll be using for the bearing is a simply a half inch bolt. Now I realize half inch bolt uh, will slip in the race a little bit. Uh, I mean it's not a it's not a uh, press fit in the race, but this whole roller, well this roller, for its entire extent of its travel, will not m turn more than 30 revolutions, and it'll just be at what speed I can pull by hand. So this is. Dimensions on this is not critical at all. I would like for these bearings to be just a, maybe a one thousandth press fit in it, but if they are, if they go in loose, that's fine. They'll be held in place uh, with spacers against the uh, inside races. So let's uh, let me get up on the scaffolding and show you uh, uh, where these are needed and why these are needed. Uh, then we'll come back and actually make this roller. Okay, I'm up on the scaffolding again, and I promise you this time I'm not standing on the chair. Uh, I realize, and looking back on it uh, in the previous video where I put this 12-foot uh, uh, I-beam up, that standing on the uh, standing on the chair up here on the scaffold was probably not that good of an idea. But uh, good Lord looked after me, and I'm back for another video. All right. Let me explain why we need this roller. I mount, I've mounted this roller on an arm now, and I'll go into more detail on that a little later in the video. But several videos back, you saw me make this adapter plate to connect this winch to the uh, trolley. Now, the weight distribution on this whole thing, and by the way, I told you in the previous video, or I asked you to give me uh, your guess on what this uh, entire setup weighed, the 12 foot I-beam, the winch, the trolley, and the adapter plate. The total weight was 176 pounds. Uh, I appreciate all the guesses. Uh, some of you were very close. I think there might have been one or two of you as well that was dead on the money. The winch by itself is 60 pounds. I'm sorry, it's 40 pounds. The winch and trolley combination is 60, but the winch is 40 pounds. And of that 40 pounds, I would say at least uh, 30 of it is this motor back here. And that means that when it's hanging on this pivot point right here, this end hangs down. Now I showed you in the video where I made the adapter plate that just a little bit of weight out here would pull that back down. And that's what I had planned to use, uh, just pulling down on the uh, cable, on the uh, whatever I may have hooked to this, a load balancer. And that works fine as long as the cable on the spool was on this end down here. But this pivot point is center way of the spool. So if the cable was behind it, the more I pulled down on it, the more weight it put on this uh, pin up here. So transporting or moving this winch back and forth uh, did not 
work out quite as I'd planned. A couple of you suggested, one of you in particular, or commented that I should have turned this 90 degrees. But again, with this weight right here, and this trolley only has weight down and wheels up here. There's nothing to keep it from rocking. And if all if this extra weight was to one side, this would have rocked completely off track. So this is the only option I had mounting it with one trolley. As I said in that first video, I could have bought two trolleys, mounted the, made the adapter a little bit longer, and uh, had no problem with balance. But these trolleys, close to $75 a piece. What I've done right now is take a uh, ratchet strap and pull this up close to the level, just somewhere close. And what we're going to do is take this roller that we're going to make today, uh, a pair of them. I got one already made, got it on this arm. We're going to set it right up there and bolt it to these holes that I have drilled in the frame of the winch. There'll be one of these on each side. And I'll go over when we come back to actually install it. But what that will do, or I'll go over how this is mounted and what this second hole up here is for. Then we'll take the winch off and then it should be fine to move back and forth uh, as needed. The stops that I put on up here are going to uh, is going to kick up. This is going to still pivot just a little bit. So let's go back in there and make this other roller and then we'll come back and put it all together. The stock I got for the roller is a, a two inch diameter. We're going to put it in the chuck and turn just enough of it, uh, get this mill scale off of it, get it cleaned up. We'll turn enough of it that we can turn it around in the vise and hold it. Or turn it around in the, in the chuck and hold it a little cleaner. And the diameter that we turn this piece, this section right here, is not critical at all as it's just the spacer between the bracket and the uh, eye beam. We're just going to try to clean it up enough Again, to remove any of the mill scale. Let's see if we're going to be able to, to keep the spider behind it here. Okay, we're going to have enough room out here uh, with the spider installed. The spider just helps uh, keep it flat, uh, have a flat surface. But we've got enough sticking out. And I've got my carriage stop set down here uh, for this length. So we'll make a cleanup pass. All right, we'll take a measurement here. I'll zero out the x axis on the DRO. That is 1.952. Our desired diameter is 1.432 so we've got 520 thousandths to take off I've got that set in the DRO and we're going to take probably about 60 thousandths per pass that's 30 off of each side I think I might have got 80 that time but it seems to be cutting it fine. All right, according to the DRO, we got about 20 more thousandths to go. We said we were looking for 1.43 and 
and that says 22,000. Don't believe I'm going to be able to get in there. We can chamfer that from the other other end. All right, I'm going to turn it around in the lathe uh, chuck now. We'll have to remove the spider because the bore hole, the center hole in that, is not near as big as the hole we're going to cut in this. So I'll get it turned around and bring it right back. The bearings we're going to be using for this have an a inch and an eighth outside diameter. We're going to bore all the way through this or drill all the way through this, uh, step drilling up to a 15 sixteenths. Then we will bore a shoulder. The 15 sixteenths will be clearance all the way through that this outside race uh, will clear once we put our shoulder on. So we're going to step drill it now. Uh, I want to drill several different steps with it. I've got the piece turned around now and got it the shoulder butted up against the uh, uh, chuck jaws. Okay, we'll slow our RPM down considerably for this next drill. Started out with a quarter inch bit. This was a three quarter here. And now we're going to the our final drill, the 15 sixteenths. All right, that should be our uh, uh, clearance hole drill through now. I'll get set up with the boring bar to, to bore out uh, for the shoulder. The thickness of a bearing is 310 thousandths. So for the boring bar, I'm going to zero out right there. And I'm going to come in a little bit. I do not want it proud by any means. So I'm going to come in 320 thousandths and set my carriage stop. Get one pass made or a couple passes and then we'll uh, take a measurement. And again, our outside diameter is 1.125. And that's 980 right now. So that's about 145 thousandths to go. And as I said at the beginning of the video, in the introduction, I would like for this to be a slight press fit. But if it comes out loose, if I overshoot it, it's not a big deal as these bearings will be sandwiched in between spacers. I always like to make a spring pass or two before I take a measurement. I overshot it about a thousandths right there, but that's still a, a good snug fit. I'll, I'll put some uh, uh, thread lock uh, in there. And that'll just help hold it in place during assembly. All right, I'm going to turn it around now and get set up to do the same thing on the other end.
Okay, that one's going to be to tap in just a little. Alright, let's go back over to the workbench and we'll put this together. Okay, off camera I made some little spacers that are half inch inside diameter and the outside diameter is the same size as the inner race on the bearings. So we'll put one of those spacers uh, on our bolt first. Well, let's get the bearings uh, installed. This was the side that was a bit loose. So we'll put some uh, thread locker red on. This happens to be the Permatex brand. Then on the other side, this one is close enough to a press fit. Well, I'll tell you what, while we're right here, we'll put a little thread lock on it as well. Get that one back in. These will be captured bearings, so they cannot come out. And again, in the full 12 foot, or little less than 12 foot that this will travel. Uh, pi times the diameter of this tells me this will not rotate, but about maximum 32 revolutions for the full travel. All right, I'm going to let that set here for a while, set up a bit. Then we'll come back and finish assembling this. All right, I think that Loctite has had enough time to, uh, to set. We'll... We'll run our bolt through, through both bearings. We'll put another spacer that fits up against that race. Our drop arm, washer, and then a nylock locking nut. I'm going to turn this over to the vise, uh, hold this bolt down here, and tighten it up. All right, I'm going to turn it over to the man saw, saw this extra off right here, and then we'll meet over on the scaffold again and get the, uh, the two rollers installed. Okay, I'm back up here now with both rollers made up. Uh, got a few tools in my pocket here. So let's see if we can get this put together. And I know you're not getting a very good shot from... Uh, from way down there on the ground But I'll try to take some still shots of all this once I get it put together All right, I've got the two rollers mounted uh, to the winch and as I showed you earlier, there's an extra hole in here. What I'm going to do is put this threaded rod with a nut on each side of the uh, drop arms and tighten those nuts down. That'll keep these rollers from any chance of them, the winch twisting and these pulling off or trying to get too close together and binding, uh, and binding on the I-beam. All right, I think I'm ready to get rid of this ratchet strap. Now, if everything is as planned, this should freely roll back and forth.
And it does. Alright, I'm going to try to take you a few still pictures of this. Of what we got up here. And then I think we might do a lift test. Okay, I think everything is working now like I had envisioned to begin with. I can easily maneuver the uh, winch from one end to the other. That stop bolt that we put in the end of the 12 foot beam, it's just right to, to stop it. Now I'm going to position the winch at what I feel like is probably the weakest link in the whole thing and that's where I jointed joined together the two pieces of uh, uh, I-beam and what we're going to do is, is lift some tractor wheel weights. I have two of the large wheel weights down here. They weigh 165 pounds a piece. Underneath them are some small wheel weights that weigh 40 pounds a piece. I've got two of the large and two of the small, and I'm going to hang the load leveler on there as well. And should be a total of 425 pounds, which again is only about a quarter ton. But uh, I think that'll be a good test. What I'm going to do is suspend that off the ground if it picks it up suspend it off the ground and leave it off the ground at least 12 to 18 hours uh it's about noon now a little afternoon here where i am i'll leave it overnight come back uh in the morning be sure nothing has sagged or broken or anything like that that'll test the i-beam uh the trolley and also a bit of a test on the uh, brake on the winch. So I'm going to get all that hooked up. Load lever is weighted at two tons. So everything here is way over spec. Let me get out from under it. All right, everything's off the ground, but it's got it about two foot uh, closer to the camera than I'd like it. I've still got to get my cord uh, situated, my power. Let's see if we can back this up some. Okay, the trolley is sitting right over the joint now. Again, that's 425 pounds, completely suspended, and I'm going to let that hang there again, probably, well, at least overnight, and sometime into the day tomorrow. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little series on this uh, uh, winch setup. Uh, I don't anticipate needing it a whole lot. Uh, for real heavy items, but uh, it will get will get a good amount of use for the smaller, like the 100 pound LP gas cylinders, picking them up and putting them on and off my truck, and other items as such. But again, I hope you've enjoyed this series, got a little bit out of it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.